Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and in this episode I'm going to be doing quite a lot of talking about my plans for the future because since the last um, episode I've not done an enormous amount of building but I have done quite a lot of thinking so hopefully that's going to make for a reasonably interesting episode. I'll touch on what I've actually been um, building first though. Uh, so the main the main thing I've added in is the um, it's the systems for build, producing um, Biological Science 3. Now, as you can see here, this isn't actually working quite as well as it should. So there's obviously some bottlenecks in here that I need to have a look at. And this seems to be a bit of a problem with this one, because it's quite there's quite a lot of throughput of some of the um, earlier ingredients, and I don't think I've really got that got a proper handle on that. So, after the, um, the t Tier 2 science is made, we're also then making some of the... Um, inputs that are being passed off to biological science to be made for making the actual science packs and these are sort of things like we've got these biological scrubbers that are being made here uh, what's it called them bio scrubbers yeah that's very good apparently it's almost exactly what they're called and then this vitalic reagent here um, that's being shipped off to um, to be made into both into made both into things for internally for here for making the catalogues and also as an ingredient for the actual science packs themselves so we need a lot of that and there isn't any being made at the moment which is a potential problem um there's a, yeah certainly seems to be a sort of a vitamin land related shortage around here so we're going to need to look at that but then from here we can then make this um the neural gel here and uh, that allows us to make the the blue um bio samples so we've got the uh, the green ones the purple ones and the blue ones and you need all of those for science bioscience 3 which seemed a little bit mean but uh, never mind i can deal with most of that we also need to start making ion stream here as well so i've just dropped in a, um, a particle accelerator and as you can see we don't need a huge amount of the blue clouds from here so we've got um i, I filled it up completely with uh, efficiency modules because these things are really really power hungry um <clears throat> To be honest, that's probably more efficiency modules than it actually needs. Each one of these is, do is knocking 100% um, off the energy consumption. Okay, so we don't need that at all. Let's um, let's just take some of these out. That's that's completely pointless. Um, we'll save them for something else. As you can see, it's still at minus 80%, which is as low as these things can ever go. It's a shame it's not running at minus 300% power. Actually, that'd be quite nice because then it would put then it would feed power back out into the grid, and that'd be really useful. So from that, we're then making all the different types of data cards. So from the top here, we've got the bioelectric data. That's not a problem. It just takes in these these blue um, bio samples, uh, zaps them thoroughly with the uh, with the ion stream, and then passes out the data. However, that's stopped because we don't have any of these bio samples coming through. So what are we missing up here? We're missing the vitalic reagent. Okay, so it is it is the thing we already know about. That's not being fed along here to be passed in, into here to make these. So that that's the first problem we've got to deal with. And hopefully it's going to be the only problem we actually have to deal with. Um, although, no, we've got the same thing here with the significant biomass here that's being made into the cryogenic state. So we're freezing that with the um, with the thermofluid. So this one was a little bit more complicated than some of the others because you've got three fluids to deal with. And that's it's not too much of a problem. It's just means you're feeding in at the bottom here, feeding out at the top, and then feeding out at the top again. So there's a little bit of spaghetti with the pipes going on here, but that's, that's that that was that was manageable. Um, and again, the, a lot of these have the sort of the, the actually this one doesn't. Um, some of these, some of these have the sort of the feedback thing going on. Is this one? This one <laughs> is taking in some uranium two three five and feeding it back out again. And then that gets passed around. It should loop round round. So this does seem to be working. Um, as soon as we as soon as we re require any of this um, um, radiation data, it'll pull through from there, and then the um, and the, the uranium will get fed back round and fed back into these machines. So I think that's probably going to be absolutely fine. Um, all of them seem to be mostly working, um, except the ones that require the blue um, bio bio samples. So let's have a look. Why do we not have any vitaminerma coming in here? If we look up here, it's because there's nothing coming in on this input. So we seem to be churning through the um, the Vitamelange extract faster than we're capable of bringing it in. So this, this station has run out completely. And if we look at this, presumably somewhere in here, it's going to tell me that um, no station fight provided supplying Vitamelange spice. Okay, that's interesting. So we've actually we've actually run completely out of Vitamelange spice, have we, over here? Here, yes, we have this. This um, this warehouse has gone completely empty. That's that's a concern. So we're going to need to look at Tulip and find out what's going on over here. So somewhere over here, there should be a facility producing massive quantities of Vitamelange spice, and there is. 
and it's feeding into this rocket. This rocket is full. Oh, but there's not enough fuel coming in. Ah. Because over here, we've got this system that's pulling in... It's producing the solid fuel, but then the solid fuel isn't getting turned into rocket fuel quickly enough because there's not enough light oil. So, right. Um, there is space for another refinery in here, so perhaps that's the problem. There's... Yeah, there's a decent amount of crude oil in these pipes. There's basically no light oil and no heavy oil. And no... Yeah, so it's just... It's, there's a shortage of fuel being refined here. So, there are a couple of possibilities. I can either fly over here, stick in some more of these fuel refineries, and that should then sort that problem out. Uh, where does... Because the oil's coming in. Yeah, there's tanks and tanks of oil here, and it's just... And it, this is presumably able to bring it in whenever it's needed. It's just not being processed quickly enough. So half a dozen more of these um, fuel refineries would probably sort the problem out. Alternatively, we could go, well, yeah, we could do that. Or we could replace this with a spaceship down here in the same way I did on Kothar and I was talking about in the previous episode. So if we have another spaceship coming over here, that'll refuel from the supply that's coming from Asalia, and then that'll stop being an issue completely. Um, we won't need any rockets to be leaving here, so we can actually then the only problem with that is it will then build up a lot of rocket parts on this planet and maybe we should ship those out as well um, and get them sorted in in space so that might be yeah I should probably think of a way to do that but having yeah having this running needing the rocket fuel on on the planet here is just causing a, a massive bottleneck and if I can start just if I can just bring in a spaceship and ship everything out with that that'll make things much much easier so I think the way to fix this in fact, the way to fix this even better is probably... Uh, I was going to say is probably to have the spaceship land here and just dump all of the... Because I think this is the only area that uses Vitamelange, um, with the exception of up here, but this is all processed Vitamelange in various ways. So... I could have the, the problem is with having the spaceship land here and unloading directly and then onto the, onto the onto the bus here is that I'd need to get the fuel to the spaceship and the spaceship fueling is all going on over here so I don't really want to, that's going to be a pain perhaps what I, <laughs> perhaps what I should have done in hindsight is had the refueling station in orbit over a salia and done all the fueling there but I think at this point it's probably probably easier just to, to go with another one of these sort of stations. So if we make a copy of this, put it in here, like that, we're going to need some more. Oh, we're going to need to do that with um, picking up all of the scaffolding under it as well, otherwise, none of this is going to work. So give me the tiles. Put that in there. Now let's put in, let's put in all of that. So we're going to need. Now I need to fly over there and put in the um, some robo ports to actually get all of that built up. Let's let's just do it from the supplies in in uh, in stock up here. So if I add in a bit more scaffolding here, then I can put in another robo port there. Uh, it needs power, of course, because of course it does. There we go. Now here come the bots to put down all of that uh, scaffolding I've just ordered. So this is a two, this is one of those things. It's a two-part, um, <clears throat> a two-step process in order to get the um, get this this built up. You need the, the first first you need the bots to come in and put down all the flooring for everything, and then you can put down the the blueprint again, and they'll come over and actually put down the the, the actual buildings you want themselves. Um, <clears throat> And then we, once once this is all put down, we can then ha hopefully I've got all of the supplies I need for another spaceship to be placed down there, and then I can just go in and reprogram it to to, um, to go to um, where do you call it? Um, to go to Tulip instead of to go to instead of instead of faffing around with uh, instead of going to Kothar. That's that sh should be pretty trivial. I'm also going to need to relabel these with an with an, with this one at least with a higher number so that it doesn't so that the spaceships don't dock in the wrong place. So all of this is, is quite doable. There's quite a few bits and pieces that are missing for this build. Um, I guess once it gets built, we'll see what's actually 
missing and why. Maybe some of the things aren't being put into um, into into the red chests like they should be. Let's fly over and have a look. Right, so with a bit of faffing around here, I've now got this set up. So this machine will use up all of nearly all of the ones in this chest first, um, and this and this and then we'll put the, we'll unload them into this chest. So we should get a decent number of these ion engines being built, but we shouldn't make too many more of these rocket engines until we've got through all of these. So that's hopefully sensible. Okay, what else are we missing for this? <clears throat> We're missing a load of um, combinators. So I think these are things I've been I've been always making these by hand, which is a little bit silly, but it's a habit. But I haven't just haven't automated that one yet. Now we seem to have run out of um, solar panels again, which is a bit weird because I keep, I keep bringing. The problem is um, the mirrors for these are being made separately on a on a sort of sub factory in obviously large quantities up there but they're not but so they're being trained off to where they're needed for science but not really being brought to where they're actually needed where they're needed for construction so every so often I'll come over here I'll grab a load of these mirrors and bring them back over here to be made into solar panels and it's a bit of a nonsense I should probably find a way of automating this but they're a bit too far apart and yeah, actually it, it does happen enough that this is starting to be a, a bit of a thing so maybe I should be doing that. Uh, no, wrong way. Okay, so that's the that's the uh, solar panel sorted out. The door and the computer potentially an issue. Why are we not? Yeah, we're making. In theory, we're making doors down here, but we don't got enough of the air because they're all going into here to be made into walls. Great. <laughs> this isn't a very well organised system down here, I have to admit. Um, there's a lot of a lot of stuff has to be done manually, and it's a bit of a, a bit silly doing it like that. But for the amount of spaceship, but, but given that making spaceships is something I don't do enormous amount of anyway, it hasn't mattered too much just yet. So what are you short of? You you oh, and then you get things like this that need a comprehensive a, um, astronomic catalog to get to um to make that. So I'll need I'll definitely need to go off and get that separately. It still feels a bit weird that there's quite a lot of things that you make that require you to bring along research pack stuff. I feel like research components shouldn't be components for actual construction of buildings and things. It just doesn't feel quite right based on how... Fa I suppose, but I say that based on how Vanilla Factorio works, and this isn't van Vanilla Factorio, so it's um, kind of perfectly reasonable. Uh... Oh, oh no! It has built them. It just hasn't put them in a chest because I haven't put a chest down for it to put them into. How are we getting on? Okay, still a warehouse, so I'll need to have a think about how I'm building warehouses. And maybe, maybe I need to put one of those together by hand. I'm not sure. But if I come over here, put my robots on. Boom. Um. Oops! Don't go anywhere. Or at least, yeah, good. It's not. It's not going anywhere, which is a relief because that shouldn't be connected to there. Yeah, if I disconnect that one, that'll stop it going anywhere for now. Okay, so it's got no fuel as well. So that, well, I don't know if that would stop it going. It sh it should do if everything's programmed correctly. But that's quite a big if. So let's have a look at these um these clamps. So that one's number four. So let's make this one number five for now. Um. It's a shame I can't put words in there, but never mind. Okay, so we need to land on clamps five, clamp fives with this one. So we're turning that into a five. And we need to fly to, we need to tell it to fly to Tulip, which is plan, which is, is this a planet? No, it's a moon, and it's moon number, oh, here we go, moon 1138. Okay. So we find here one of these program with yep yeah, this one is moon program up to 11:38. So that now this will now automatically fly off to um, to Tulip, and then we need to reprogram these to be uh, which one is it? It's the um, it's still a raw material. It's that one, Vitamin Lange Spice. So we reprogram that, and then the spice can flow. Um, oh, and down here as well. Except that we don't have any um, warehouses to put this, put the stuff into, is it when it comes? Oh no, we've got one of those. That's all right. That that was that we we found one of them. So in theory, that should be everything I need to do for this spaceship, apart from the, 
apart from the basic plumbing down here. Ooh. Where I need another copy of... Th oh, I need, need to put down a bit more of this first. Just like that. That should be enough. And I can take a copy of that. And put it in there. And then link these together like... This isn't going to fit, is it? Nope. That's probably an... They're quite close to fitting, but they're not quite. Uh, so I'm going to need to make some nines. There we go. So now we'll fill up the tanks here. And once that's full, the spaceship would be re will be ready to go, but it won't actually go. Uh, why isn't this one flowing? Oh, there's a missing piece of um, underground pipe there because there wasn't some scaffolding. There we go. Now we can fill, both, fill all of these tanks up, and then the ship will be uh, all, all loaded up and ready. Because when it comes back, there won't be anywhere to put all of the... Um, stuff it's picking up. Let's find it. Let's find one that's not being used. A stone should be being used. Ah, this one here. The um, iridium. That's definitely not required anymore. So we can put that in there. Because I'm now bringing in, in, the iridium in up here. So that's that's that sorted. Um, I'm a bit worried by this empty stone um, container over here. We are actually completely out of stone. And that seems like an odd thing to run out of because I'm sure that's being produced as, an, as a byproduct all over the place. And it's supposed to be being shipped up from Norvis if necessary as well. So let's, let's have a look down here at the spaceport. One of these is going to be stone, I imagine. Or maybe it isn't. Maybe I've just been relying on it coming from all the other planets and it, it hasn't been. That's a worry, especially as I don't think there's that much stone left on Norvis. I've been getting through a lot of it, um, and I don't see many big patches of it around. So this, so this is possibly where I, I said I was going to start talking about some of my um, my plans for the future. I've, I've, I've waffled on a bit about getting this rocket sorted out instead, though. Um, so I'll, I'll touch on those quickly, and then you, we can go into them in a bit more detail when I actually get round to deploying them. Why is this still that in there? Uh, let's put it in here instead. Can I? No, I can't. Okay, that's why it's that's why it's in there because my inventory's full. Okay, so that's that's enough of this. This 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 is going to then be my my solution for Tulip. I just need to fly out there and and get that sorted. So I'll do that probably at the beginning of the next stream. So the next things to be done to be doing over here, I've just started construction of a of a station over here where I'm going to be building up the the probes to launch satellites. So if we look in FNEI, we'll see that if I t if I search for probe, we've got. We've got the uh, we've got the asteroid belt probes. We've got the star probes. Now these need to be launched fr from in an asteroid belt and from in a in a, um, a in a close orbit around a star. Um, so I'm going to go off and need to build another couple of extra bases for these, and that will allow me to get the asteroid probe belt data and the star probe data uh, using by launching the space probe rockets from a space probe rocket silo from those particular areas. So that's going to as I say that's going to mean going out and building up some additional bases in in other places to, uh, to to do this from if we look on on here we can see if we go to the um universe explorer they we've got well the Kalidus orbit is where we put the um the probe for the star data so because that's not it's reasonably close it shouldn't it's only a sort of 4000 delta v away <clears throat> it's reasonably close but if we were, but and we're going to need to head out to Kalidus orbit uh, sorry Kalidus asteroid belt as well for the asteroid probe data so these so these are the two new bases that I'm going to build they should be fairly simple because all I need to all I really need to have on them is a bit of solar power in order to, a few solar panels in order to run the base one of those um, rocket silos that I was talking about <laughs> one of the one of these rocket rocket silos and then we're going to have a spaceship that shuttles backwards and forwards taking out a handful of the um, space probe rocket parts, which is made up from all of this stuff, or maybe we can just make make up this entire rocket. You know, we certainly just make the entire rocket here. We'll take out maybe ten of those at a time, and then we'll come back. Oh, and and and, and ten of these as well, and then we'll come back with a load of stacks of the asteroid probe belt data. So it's going to be a relatively small amount of stuff that I'm transporting around because I think they stack really, really high and you get quite a lot for, for each one of these. But then that'll be the data cards that I need to then drop in for making the um, the Astro uh, Astro Catalog 4 and Energy Catalog 4. And that'll allow me to get the fourth tier of sciences for those. Um, and that's basically the only thing in those that's, that's particularly complicated. Everything else is reasonably straightforward. So I'm not... So I think... That's, so that's going to be one of the big things I want to do. 
the other thing I want to do is if we have a look at Norvis again, just down here, I've got my core miners and they're digging up lots and lots of stuff, including actually there's loads of stone coming out. So my what I was saying about being short of stone is apparently not quite as true as I thought it was. Um, so these will dig up core samples, which then get split out into copper, iron, um, vulcanite, coal, uh, tiny amounts of uranium, all, all that good stuff, which we can then pass out to these stations here and send stuff to be sorted out and dealt with. So I want to expand this. And the way I want to make this better is not by putting in more of these, because that doesn't work. Each time you put in another one of these, it, it reduces the amount it, uh, of, um, you, uh, you get from that particular planet. So if you have six, then you get less per drill than if you only have two, for example. So what I plan to do is have these core mining drills out on all of the all of the external planets, all the planets where I'm digging up stuff. And then the, if, you, if you're digging up the more interesting core samples, like, for example, a Holmanite core sample, you pull those up, and then you cr when you first crush those, you get the normal core fragments, you get holmanite, and you get stone. So what I want to do is ship off the core fragments and the stone off to another planet somewhere, like back down to Norvis, um, where we'll turn those, where we'll, then cr where we'll then feed them into this sort of system, where we can crush those to get all of these useful things out. The holmanite that's created from, from, from this will then be just fed into the existing infrastructure on that planet to be made into holmium and in the case of holmium into blue circuits as well so all of that will then just carry on as normal it'll just be another place it's fed in from that planet um, but we'll get these core fragments and from them we'll get all of this useful stuff here um, because i'm aware that on norvis i'm getting through I'm, I'm setting up a lot of mines around here so there's a coal mine here there's an iron mine here and they're, they're getting depleted really quite quickly because we're using crazy amounts of copper especially and probably coal for turning for fluidizing up in space so you see all this all these dead copper mines and i'm worried that i'm going to start running out of um, resources on this planet yes there's quite a lot of planet left but there's it's still it's an effort to go out there and deal with all the biters so i'd rather if i can i'd rather avoid that instead it's, it's the, 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 the my preferred option here is to find a better way a better supply of all of these ores that won't run out uh, so that's that's my other plan for the future. So there's two big plans there that I'm going to, that I need that I'm working towards. The other thing I want to do is when I go out to um, Kalidas orbit, is start thinking about energy beaming um, because that's, so that's sort of you put load. The idea behind that is you put loads and loads of solar panels in orbit around Kalidas, um, and then you can use that to beam power to your other planets and and have a bit slightly more efficient and effective um, power generation. Uh, system, especially for planets where you haven't set up massive nuclear plants like I have here on 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 Norvis. Uh, over here we've got one, two, three. Oh, There's only three of them, but you still, uh, you get the idea. Having the having another another method of generating power would be quite nice, and you can also use it as a weapon as well. And I believe it's also possible to sort of use it for spaceships with a bit of sort of faffery and faffing around. So that might be something I'll do as well. We shall we shall see how that goes. So, there's a lot of plans for the future, but for now, I've got the Biological Science 3 up and running, and I've got the and I've got um, that spaceship ready to start going off and getting the and uh, filling in the filling in the shortages there. So that's something I'm going to be getting on with in the next stream. Uh, as Factorio in, um, space exploration streams are all on Tuesdays these days, so please do come along if you're interested and um, there's something there to watch. With while I'll be uh, running running through things in 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 real time as I go through and design and build all of my all of my new outposts. We've got Industrial Revolution streams on Thursdays, so that's the four of us playing through trying to get. Trying to do similar things, but with much lower tech level and none of the space exploration stuff. Just, just steam power and then electrical power, and then after that, I think there's some sort of laser systems in there as well. But, but we haven't got to those yet. We're still, we're still struggling with stainless steel and stack inserters. So there's, there's, there's plenty to do there. And then, of course, on the other days, there's the GTA videos. They're coming out um, a couple of times a week. Um, they're, they're all good fun. Please do come along and watch those as well. And if you'd like to join in with them, uh, let me know. There's always room for more hunters. <laughs> and um, I think that's probably about it for this episode. So as always, thank you for watching. And uh, I'll um, be getting on with lots of this stuff. And you'll see, you'll, you'll see how it's gone next episode. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you then. If I hook this up now, I should fly straight off to Tulip. Let's find out.
Ah, uh, yes. The first time you use a new spaceship, I believe you have to hit engage manually. Um, so we'll do that. 